Welcome to Relaxation Hypnosis for Anxiety, Stress and Panic Attacks. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now I thought in this recording I'd focus on previous times when you've dealt with, let's say, a panic attack or, you know, uh, extreme anxiety or stress. The reason I'm thinking about this is because it's natural to expect what has come before. You know, it's it's a it's a very logical thing to expect in the future what has happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen doesn't mean that it has to happen or it needs to happen or that it will happen so that's something that could be useful to address because it's quite easy to get caught up in that way of thinking that limited way of thinking that we're all capable of doing so I'm very careful to I want to word this in a way that it doesn't sound like I'm being judgy or you know Because we're all capable of negative thinking. We're all capable of catastrophe thinking. And I think when there's been perhaps many or too many, I think is a good way of saying it, too many experiences of anxiety, panic in the past and maybe the recent past. It makes sense to think that it's going to happen in the future. It makes sense, very logical, makes a lot of sense to expect it to happen in the future. More of the same. But it doesn't mean that it has to. It doesn't mean that you have to think that way. There's a thing with... uh, I remember years ago... Learning about stopping smoking. And... You know, helping people to stop and... I kind of studied it a little bit because I wanted to stop smoking myself at the time. This is, you know, late 90s. And the idea was that actually we all, you know, the majority of people wouldn't start smoking to the very earliest would be perhaps late teens or perhaps 15, 14, 16 you know of course there's going to be the exception that has you know, started very young but most people wouldn't start smoking until they've been alive for maybe 15, 16, 17 years maybe longer So the logic behind that was, well, if 
you can go 17 years without smoking, you can get through the end of the day without smoking. So it's doing what we already do, and that is selective thinking, selecting bias, selecting uh, focus on parts of the past. So if someone's going to go on a first date with somebody and they may have had a few really good dates with other people in the past and maybe a few not so good ones. Now what that person focuses on could have a big impact on the upcoming date. So if I was to go on a date tonight and all I did was focus on the, let's call them mistakes that perhaps I made or the feeling of uh, it not having gone well, I'll start to expect that to happen. And apart from possibly not even wanting to go on the date, and maybe pulling out and cancelling, if I did actually go on the date, I might not be the best version of myself that I would like to be for that date. I might be a little bit oversensitive, I might be tripping over my words because you know, try and not to say the wrong thing. Instead of just relaxing and being yourself. So it's selective thinking. I could think of previous dates that were really lovely and perhaps what I would call successful and there's been a few of those and then maybe I'll feel more confident in your ability to deal with the upcoming situation because you're remembering the times when actually things went okay So when I had my first full big panic attack, I say the first because I realized later that I had had them in the past, but I didn't know what they were. And they were, there was quite a big distance between them, you know, what they weren't, you know, once I was in a, a club, a nightclub, and it was so busy, it was so kind of claustrophobic, um, everyone was smoking, and it was so hot, and I just, you know, I, I had a panic attack, and I was struggling to breathe, and everything was just really weird, but I didn't know what it was at the time. I didn't know anything about panic attacks or anxiety, really. I knew a little bit about stress, but I had no idea about um, anxiety attacks. I didn't, never even heard of them. In fact, it wasn't, it wasn't really talked about back then. You know, things like PTSD, I mean, that was kind of still called shell shock, I think. You know, I don't think even bipolar was 
and it was still called manic depressants. You know, it's so it's going back a while. I am in fact about three hundred years old. I only sound one hundred and fifty. So it's something about what you focus on. So when I had the the major panic attack, when I was at work in my office in 2002, it was November, I remember it. I started afterwards, I started to expect to have them. And I was thinking about going to work And that's what I was thinking about. The fact that I was, what, 32 years old. Been working full time since I was 15. So what's that? 17 years. Never had a panic attack at work in my life up to that point. I've been working at that place for 13 months. Never had a panic attack there until that time. So instead of thinking about all the hundreds of examples, maybe thousands if you go through the the years, of times when I've been at work, gone to work, you know, and everything has been fine. Instead of thinking of that stuff, I was focusing on the the one example, but then became two examples and five and 15 examples. But I was focused on them, not all the hundreds and hundreds of examples of feeling fine. So I wasn't expecting to feel fine. I'm not saying that it's just about how you think and it's just about what you focus on. But it has an effect, it really does. It always has and it always will. Because what we think about affects our behavior. What we think about affects our experience of this world. What we think about affects our life. Just in a huge way. Because you know you could have the worst night's sleep, get up in the morning and find out, you go and buy a scratch card in the shop, in the news agents, and you win $5,000 or £5,000. You're going to have a good day, regardless of how little sleep you've had. You're going to have a good day, regardless of how the management are. Regardless, you, it won't matter what the weather's like. You can have a good day because of the way that you're seeing the world on that day. It's raining. It won't bother you. Why would it bother you? You just won five grand, which is a nice little bit of money, which could pay for a nice holiday. Could pay for. Pay for presence for loved ones it could whatever it's it's something special it doesn't have to be money you could get a phone call finding out that your your grandchild's just been born you're going to have a good day 
regardless, even if you, even if you've got a cold or you're physically unwell, you know you're going to have a good day because something special and magical has happened in your life. Because it's nothing else has changed. The world is still the same. Everybody else is still doing their thing. But the way you're choosing to select how you see things and how you think and what you focus on changes and it's that old uh, it's usually a put down that people use uh, about people that are perhaps positive thinking you know looking at the world through was it rose coloured spectacles and stuff like that as if it's a bad thing as if Feeling happy is somehow wrong or something to be ashamed of, to actually feel good inside, to actually be in touch with what an amazing person you are and what, you know, how every day is a new opportunity to experience more of those pleasant feelings that you have experienced in the past or you can choose to focus on the unpleasant ones if that is your choice and it is your choice you can spend an hour and a half cooking a lovely meal for yourself you put it on a plate and you can walk into the living room. You have a choice. You can drop it on the floor. Or you can put it onto the table and eat it. It's your choice. If you drop it on the floor. There's no point in feeling rubbish about it. Or feeling angry or upset or blaming anyone. Because you chose to do it. And that brings us to the blame part of things. So I think with uh, anxiety, stress, panic, just like most things in life, there's this, it's a human thing. Basically, I guess we are taught this. It must be a taught thing. The need, there's a need to blame. Never such a strong need to credit people, to reward people, to congratulate people. Much stronger need to blame people. And again, we've all got that in us. We've all been drawn into that silliness of blame and I suppose when I had my first big panic attack I kind of blamed the job I blamed um, my bosses for pushing me to get the most sales in that week which I accomplished but then I knew that I was responsible for what I did I was responsible for wanting to beat the sales record I was responsible for doing all the extra hours 
so I was able to blame myself instead of stepping back and realising that actually you're not to blame no more than you're to blame for any other physical or mental or emotional illness or disorder or problem even if previous behaviour has perhaps had a big impact on the current situation what possible use could there be to be blaming yourself to be punishing yourself and haven't you punished yourself enough isn't you know enough is enough time to start being kind to yourself time to start to be selective but in a different way be selective and start selecting those things that you appreciate about yourself start selecting those memories of times when you felt relaxed select those memories where you felt calm and capable of dealing with whatever comes your way selecting those memories where you were able to just let go of stuff and decided to put yourself first put your health first because your health and your mental well-being is it's just too important to ignore but let's face it you can have the best car in the world but you can spend all your time on it you can clean it you can you know get every accessory possible it could be the most expensive car on the planet but if you take the wheels away it's nothing more than just a really I don't know a funny shaped greenhouse you put in you know grow some tomatoes in it sheltered park bench and your health is the wheels without the wheels the car's going nowhere without your health we can't go anywhere without our health we need to be able to relax and in order to relax we need to stop the blame and that includes blaming others plus of course stopping blaming yourself and some people may say oh, I don't really blame myself in that case between now and the next recording start listening to what you say to yourself start noticing what you visualize what you what you imagine you know when you maybe you're sitting down on a bus or maybe you're watching telly but you start zoning out and you're starting to think about going to work tomorrow or going to school or college or going to a, a social event where there's going to be people uh, and just notice how you are imagining that future situation to be and I like the idea of the rose coloured spectacles 
maybe use it in an analogy of a relaxation spectacles so relaxing spectacles looking through the lens of relaxation so when you think about the future and it could be any event make sure you've got those spectacles on in your mind and look through that lens and maybe it can have a color maybe light blue whatever the color of relaxation may be to you it doesn't have to have a color it might have a sound it doesn't have to have a sound but it's a frame of mind it's choosing selecting when you think about that thing that hasn't happened yet so basically you can have anything happen for something that hasn't happened yet if you've got a wedding to go to and you're imagining the wedding that maybe this this weekend coming and perhaps perhaps you're not a big fan of being in crowds or being at big social events I'm not personally so you're thinking about this thing coming up at the weekend as an example you can imagine absolutely anything happening so you can choose you can choose the most horrible thing or you can choose the most beautiful thing you can choose the most absurd thing you can choose something that makes you feel good now like in this moment thinking about this future event imagine the bride and groom or whatever or the priest or whoever's like you know getting married imagine them with like flower pots on top of their heads perhaps imagine this people made of marshmallows dancing with each other something silly something absurd something that you could say well that would never happen but the same could be said about anything if you're going to imagine something why not choose what you imagine because that's something that you do have control over 100% some people say well I can't control what happens when in the moment I can't control what happens on the event regardless of whether that's true or not you can control how you imagine the event to occur 100% you can choose how you imagine that you can add your own music you can make it funny you can make it silly you can turn it into a ballet you can pretty much do whatever you want to do because it's your imagination this is your mind and what you imagine affects how you feel about the event coming up and how you feel about the event coming up will affect how you feel at the event at that wedding so if you imagine everything being really good you imagine yourself feeling really relaxed
you feel good, you feel relaxed in the moment. It feels nice. And the more you imagine that, when the wedding actually comes, you're going to experience things differently to the way you would have done if you'd have been imagining it being a nightmare. It doesn't mean that imagining it being a nightmare will mean it will be a nightmare. Of course not. But the way you expect the things you expect to happen. The actual things might not happen, but your feelings may happen. And that expectation of something happening can have a big effect on our well-being. On our levels of relaxation can increase with that imagining things working out really well. Because if I said to you I'd like you to just imagine the ideal safe space, the ideal place where you feel safe and it could be like a, your own den, you know, your own uh, playroom or office or it could just be your home. Or it could be your garden or your shed. It could be whatever it is. It's your space. And you can have anything in it that you want. Anything that you dream of. Now I can't guess what you would have. And nor do I need to. Because it's none of my business. It's your imagination and you can have anything you want in that safe space a place where you can relax feel calm and feel just really feel happy because you're going to have stuff there that you like to be around so it might be games it might be if you're into carpentry it might be you know carpentry tools it might, if you're into tropical fish, it might be full of tropical fish, whatever it might be. If you're a musician, you might have a, a big room full of musical instruments and a top recording studio. You know, this it's the imagination. There is no limit to what you can have. And the room can be a small room or it can be a thousand, thousand, hundred thousand acres doesn't matter it's your imagination you know what I can guarantee you won't be in there the thing you won't have in that room that safe space is something that you don't like if you don't like crocodiles you're not going to have a crocodile running around If there's a specific person that you don't like, you wouldn't allow them in there. If you've got no interest in cats, you wouldn't have a cat in there. If you know, if you don't like peanut butter, you wouldn't have a big cupboard full of peanut butter in there. Why would you? I mean, practically, you wouldn't do it. But it's your imagination even more so. It'll only be things that you want, that you love, that you like, that you enjoy. They're the only things that you imagine. So take that situation and just add it to everything that you imagine. 
and you start to realise that but of course imagining a situation in the future being rubbish and stressful and anxiety producing is going to feel crap even when you imagine it before it's even happened this might be something a year away an event a year away from now it might be something that may not ever happen but you're going to feel rubbish imagining a negative outcome so it's your imagination why, why would you do that to yourself you're on your own in your mind there's no one else there it's your mind you own your thoughts you own your imagination It's like when you're watching television. You may be in a relationship, you may have a family, you may have a shared house, and perhaps you don't have the remote control all the time. So you may sit through programs you don't particularly want to watch. You're sure you're not going to do that when you're on your own, though, are you? If you're sitting through a program, let's say it's a James Bond film you've seen it before 20 years ago and the person that's watching it with you goes to bed or goes out to work or whatever are you going to continue to sit watching it when you know every single thing that happens and you've seen it probably 14 times before Or are you going to turn a TV over to something that you want to watch? So that you can feel the way that you want to feel. Now I would definitely turn a television over to a different channel. It's not about James Bond films, it's just the idea is that we tolerate certain things when we have to. Watching a program that we don't want to watch because the person we love is watching it and they like it. But once they're gone and they're moved, they've gone to bed or you know they've gone to do something else, you don't have to watch it anymore. You have control with that remote control. You have way more control with your imagination. Because with your imagination, you can transform your life by imagining future events to be really nice imagining tomorrow to wake up feeling relaxed to imagine going to work maybe feeling relaxed and confident imagine getting to work still feeling calm and relaxed imagine enjoying seeing your work colleagues imagine doing the various tasks that your job entails and feeling relaxed imagine enjoying it imagine appreciating maybe having a job appreciating the good aspects the positive useful aspects even if it's just getting paid Imagine and feel and relaxed on your way home. Imagine getting home and being pleased to get home, but not because the day's been so rubbish, 
but because you're home and you like being at home and you can feel relaxed even more relaxed maybe but in a different way because you can take your shoes off and you can take your socks off and you can wear different clothes and if you want to dress up as Superman or Spider-Man or Wonder Woman you can you probably can't do that at work unless you're a superhero so that's just some thoughts to think about some ideas to focus your mind around your imagination so what can you imagine and if anyone's thinking well I don't really have an imagination and I don't visualise well we all we all have an imagination every single one of us and it's not about visualising it's about thinking about let's say tomorrow it doesn't have to be a visual thing it doesn't have to be like a photograph or a movie it's about the feeling it's about the feeling you have when you think about feeling relaxed compared to the feeling that you may have had with previous imaginings before heading off to work or before going to sleep imagining the day ahead been stressful expectations into expecting to feel relaxed and calm expecting to feel open and able to deal with whatever the day presents to you and knowing that everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. You are okay. You've felt relaxed many times in your life. And you can feel relaxed right now. And you can feel relaxed tomorrow. speak to you again soon and have a good day have a good tomorrow have a relaxed tomorrow enjoy your tomorrow <laughs>